Hey everyone and welcome to Piscator UK. Well guys, you join me in one of my favourite places which is the Highlands of Scotland and I'm going to be doing a bit of dry fly fishing today. It's probably a form of fishing that maybe you've never even seen before. You've maybe heard of it but maybe never seen it before. And I'm going to be using a piece of equipment that has probably never been seen before anywhere. The piece of equipment I'm going to be using, it is used for a different type of fishing and when I seen this piece of equipment I just thought to myself this would be perfect for this method. Now the method of fishing that I'm going to be doing is a form of dry fly fishing and it is a recognised form of fly fishing and I'm going to be dapping today. Now dapping is probably one of the oldest forms of fly fishing that's known and it probably dates back over 400 years. And because of that, back then they wouldn't have had the modern fly fishing equipment that we know of today with good rods, reels. In fact, there was none of that back then. Certainly no fishing reels. Now because this method is so simple, I think that anyone with little or no experience could pick up this piece of equipment that I'm gonna show you today. And because there's no casting involved, you, you can't get much easier than this guys. Now, although I'm going to be doing an old style of fly fishing, dry fly fishing, which is dapping, uh, I am going to be using modern equipment. Because it's a modern piece of equipment, it's very light. You can f use this piece of equipment all day. And when I first saw this piece of equipment, which is used for coarse fishing, I thought, this is going to be perfect for dapping. And I mentioned coarse fishing there. And the piece of equipment I'm going to be using is called a whip. It's a whip pole and it's used for carp fishing uh, or silverfish fishing uh, and it's very good for that as well. But when I saw this piece of equipment I just had dapping in mind uh, and trust me guys it works. The pole that I've got is a five meter pole. It comes with a half meter extension so I'm fishing five and a half meters of pole, fishing pole. So 17 feet roughly in old money and as I said it's, it's very light you know it's, you can hold this all day and it's telescopic so I've got five meters of telescopic pole made of carbon hence the reason why it's so light so it's easy transportable and I say that it comes with a half meter extension so giving me five and a half meters now this pole is pretty cheap cost you less than a full tank of fuel for your car and and it comes with a multitude of different tips in the pack and these tips have got elasticated bungee in them yeah they give you a different uh, resistance against the fish and I'm just using one of the heavier ones today in the pole uh, just for a little bit of give should I get a take from a trout and you get one that's fixed with no elastic and as I said, these are used for coarse fishing, but trust me guys, when you see this in action, I think you'll be impressed. The pole itself is made in the UK. It's made by Midi, and it's called a bagging machine. And it, as I said, it's a five, a five meter pole with a half meter extension. And uh, what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description and you can go and check it out guys if you're ever interested. And as I said, you can use this for course fishing, it's how I got my grandson into course fishing and it's a brilliant piece of kit. But for me it's much more than just used for course fishing. Now I mentioned obviously I'm going to be dapping and you can use this form of fishing in a multitude of different ways. You can use it on the boat, kayak, float tube. But today I'm going to be using it on the bank because I would say the majority of us have got access to the bank rather than having access to a boat, kayak or float tube. And I think everything that I show you today, um, it should be able to arm yourselves with the knowledge that you need and just get out there and catch fish, which is what it's all about. As much as I love traditional fly fishing, you know, casting can be the most challenging aspect of modern day fly fishing to those that try it. And this method, because it's so productive and it can be so good, that will get someone hooked on fly fishing alone, I think. So because of all these elements, this form of fishing is probably one of the easiest forms of fly fishing. In fact, it's probably one of the easiest forms of fishing 
that there is. And not only is it easy, it is super productive when the conditions are right. And that's what I'm hoping for today is just to show you how effective this method is and how easy it is to catch stunning wild brown trout, which is my target species today on the dry fly. Now there's many terms used for dapping and my term that I use for dapping is it represents life. And that life is the form of a fly that is dancing on the surface, representing and imitating a fly that would normally act in this way. A fly that's dancing on the surface is it's doing one of two things. It could be mating or it could be laying eggs. And it's only on the surface of the water for a very short period of time. And that's what makes this method so successful because the trout hasn't got very long to inspect the, the fly. Unlike traditional fly fishing that we know today, dry fly fishing, where your fly is on the water for a period of time and you can only put so much action into that fly with modern day fishing techniques. And matching the hatch for normal fly fishing is really important but it's not as important for this technique because the fly is not on the water for a long period of the time. Therefore, you don't need to match the hatch in such a crucial way, unlike fly fishing that we know today. So guys, let's see if we can catch some of these stunning Scottish wild brown trout. Okay guys, let's see if this is gonna work. I've got a little size 16 winged olive on. And I'm just letting that wind catch the dapping floss. Now I'll go through how the whip pole is set up uh, later on in the video. But I'll just explain it. I've got dapping floss, which is a really light uh, line. And it is a floss, but it's really strong. But because it's light, the wind catches it. And I've got approximately 17 feet of pole. And I've got nearly the same in line, almost the same length as my pole, just slightly longer. And I'm just hopping that fly on the surface, not letting it sit too long. Now there's no trout rising. There's no trout actually rising to a hatch at the moment. I did see a few olives, that's why I put the olive on. And my rule of thumb for matching the hatch, and you'll, you'll hear this term quite a lot in fly fishing if you're new to fly fishing, about matching the hatch. Now, I don't go into detail on names of flies. I, I just like to keep things really simple like I do with most other methods of fishing that I do. So for me to match the hatch, I just look for size and colour of the flies that are hatching around you or that you may see a few on the water. And that's it. I just keep it as simple as that. And the wind's just dropped here. And I mentioned at the start that to fish this method effectively, uh, you need one vital ingredient. And that is you need a bit of wind. Because I'm using a light uh, floss line, that wind catches the line. And you can use this method in really strong winds. In fact, a strong wind that may put off even an advanced fly fisherman because of the wind conditions, you know, to present a fly with consistency and accuracy in a heavy wind, it can be quite difficult even for an experienced angler. But you can use this method when the wind is blowing quite strong. And when I go into the, a bit of detail on how I rig the, the pole up with the dappen floss, I use different lengths for different strengths of wind. And like I said, I'll tell you about that when I actually go through it. Now the wind's just dropped, so there's no point in me putting my line out because it's just going to sort of hang at my feet here. Now, like I said, there's, there's no fish rising. And that would sometimes put a dry fly fisherman off. You know, they may stay to a, a soft hackle fly or wet fly underneath the surface or a nymph. Because this fly is just touching the surface and it's barely on the surface for you know a few seconds at a time and then you're lifting it off and you know you're 
dancing it on the surface. That that action induces takes, even when there's no other fish rising. And I mentioned about matching the hatch. And when it comes to dapping, you don't need to be as strict as matching the hatch because the fly is not on the surface that long. So it's that action that induces the take of the dancing on the surface. And because the, the fly is not on the surface that long, the trout's not got time to inspect the fly because it's already seen it moving on the surface and it's coming up usually at, with a little bit of speed and they just want that fly because that fly is moving. So you don't need to match the hatch as much. In general, I just go for size and mostly when I'm dapping, I use a colour that I can actually see rather than a colour that's represented by the fly life around me. So at the moment, uh, you can see quite light water, light coloured water with a reflection off the sky. I'll use a darker fly so I can see it. And if I had dark water because of a shadow or it was overcast, then I would use a lighter fly so I could see it. That's my rule of thumb for dapping. But there is times when, you know, you do need to sort of try and match the hatch. Fish are funny and they'll just switch off. And it's that movement of the fly, the nine times out of ten, that makes the trout come up to grab your fly. Uh, because it's been watching it, it may have watched it for a, a few seconds and it's known that it's moving. So it's coming up, you know, usually quite fast. And some of the takes are really quite aggressive. In fact, sometimes you'll get a trout jumping clear of the water as you're lifting it off. Now the wind's picked up, so let's get the fly out. Now you may not think this is a very far distance. I'm roughly about maybe 25. There's a fish, fish on. And that's how effective this method is, guys. You know, if that was a, a traditional fly line, and, and with your reel and casting, there's no lag time because I'm fishing almost directly to my fly. So you see the fish, tra you see the fish rise and you lift into it. Uh, and nine times out of 10, you hook it. That's why it's so productive. It's like, it's like fishing the Euro Nymph. Because you've got that direct contact, your hookup rate is second to none. Lovely little brown trout. There we go. A little olive in the side of the mouth. And you see what I mean guys? There's not a trout rising. And I induced that fish there because of the movement of the fly. Literally Seconds on the water, bam. And as I was saying before that fish took, I'm only about 20 feet away from it at the moment. And in my experience with fly fishing, most of my fish that I catch on a traditional fly rod and reel are 20 to 30 feet from you. Bit of a stronger gust there. At the moment I've got approximately four metres of dapping floss on and if the wind was to pick up I would shorten that to maybe three metres. I keep different lengths of dapping floss already made up. But because the wind's been dropping a little bit I'll keep the four metres on just now and just see how we go. dancing it on the surface, letting the wind, if the wind wants to pick up the line, then let it pick up the line. Now my fly is starting to sink a little bit, so I need a little bit more floating on. Seems not too bad, it's still on the surface, but it's a little bit submerged. And this form of fly fishing is just so simple that I believe that someone watching this video 
with no experience, in fact no experience in fishing, never mind fly fishing, will be able to come and use this method by what I teach you today and you'll be able to catch fish on the fly, on the dry fly which is super exciting there's no better feeling than seeing a fish come up to your fly and taking it At the moment guys I've got a horn sedge on it, quite a big fly. The wind has stayed strong for the past hour or so and I've just been messing about with different flies and I just missed a take on the horn sedge so I sometimes definitely interested in it. There's no fish rising So it's a case of just putting on something that I'm just keep chopping and changing just to see what they're going for No, nothing <laughs> See that? Jump right out of the water after the fly Let's see if it comes back The sage is definitely interested in a couple of fish. I can't remember if I've said, but I've actually shortened the tapping floss down to two metres just to give him a bit of control in this wind. It's quite strong now, it's probably blowing about 15 miles an hour. Oh, and that was another fish. <laughs> Ah, oh, brilliant. See if it's still there. That's a fish on. Hello, guy. Sedge in it. Oh, look at the colours. Beautiful. Horn sage. Now, this fly is, seems to be doing the business, so it's certainly. A bit of interest. <laughs> if that fish comes back. I lifted it off. <laughs> I lifted the fly off the water just as it came up. And that wasn't the one that. <laughs> wasn't the one that it took originally. It was much bigger than that. Still a lovely fish. Perfect. <laughs> See if this one comes back.
few fish rising now. Just a tiny one. Little horn sedge, size 18. Beautiful. Let's dry this fly off. I think maybe time for another one, hopefully. Hi, guys, as I mentioned in the fishing video, that I would go through how I set up the five and a half meter wet pole for dapping. Now I mentioned in the video that I have different lengths of dapping floss for different wind situations. I normally have a, a 2 meter section, a 3 meter section and a 4 meter section and they're all made up exactly the same as each other just with different lengths of dapping floss and different lengths of tippet. Now the next thing I do is I take some 6 pound, in this case Maxima mono, you can use any mono that you want, I like 6 pound. And this is going to be the end that's going to be attached to the end of the whip pole. Now I like to use a figure of eight loop. Now I'll put a link in the description of how to tie the figure of eight loop. It's very easy. There are other loop knots out there, but I like the figure of eight loop knot. I then tie another figure of eight loop knot into a short piece of mono. And this is approximately 12 to 18 inches long. And this is a bit, like I say, that's going to attach to the end of your whip pole and attach to the first section of your dapping floss. Now the first thing I do on all the lengths is I do a figure of eight in each end of the dapping floss. So this is one end and figure of eight is really simple. Figure of eight and just make sure that's pulled quite tight. Now you can trim off most of the excess if you want. And I would do the, exactly the same on the opposite end of the dapping floss, regardless of the length of dapping floss that I'm using. Now you can make this ahead of time. And I usually do, I have all my lengths of dapping floss already made up. So the first thing you want to do is attach one end of your loop to the end of your dapping floss. And it's really quite simple. Just take your loop and fold that over. So that you have a sort of sliding loop. Take the end of your dapping floss with the knot in it. Put that through the loop. And then just simply pull down on the loop, give it a little tug and then just before you tighten up on it properly just slide that down towards the figure of eight knot that's in your dapping floss and then give that a good cinch down and that's not going to go anywhere you know you'll keep that on for maybe a whole season uh, because the dapping floss is quite strong and that's the end that goes to your whip pull attached to the first section of your dapping floss. And the end of your tippet that you're going to attach to your dapping floss connects to the dapping floss exactly the same way you've already got the figure of eight knot in there. Just show you. Just fold that loop over on itself and then just double that back so that you have a sliding loop. Take the end of your dapping floss, put it through the loop, and then short sharp tug. And again, I like to slide that down to the figure of eight knot so that it's not going to move. And I give that a good cinch up. And, and like you say, the length of this tippet will be approximately one foot over length of my total pole length. 
this is the end of my tippet and this is the end that I'm going to attach my dry fly to and you can attach your dry fly in many different ways I like to use a davy knot or a double davy knot obviously you can use whatever you know or you know certainly go on YouTube how to attach a fly to mono and I'm sure you'll find lots of fishing knots that's out there but I like the davy knot it's really simple and it doesn't kink the line when you tighten up on it so guys I'll quickly show you the davy knot this is a single davy knot and I always like to do it exactly the same way and if you stick to this then you can't go far wrong so I like to go down the eye of the hook of the fly so that your tag end is below take your tag end and cross that over your main line you then want to take your tag end and go back through your loop cross over the bottom of the loop and then go back up the loop hold your tag end keep and hold the tag end and cinch down on it and you know when you've tied it right that the tag end is 90 degrees from your line and it's probably the only knot that you tie to mono that you don't need to moisten the knot when you cinch down on it so in terms of fishing equipment for dapping it doesn't get much more simpler than this put your dapping floss like I said I like to make up different lengths 2 meter 3 meter and 4 meter for different wind strengths have some bit heavier mono that I use to attach my dapping floss to the end of my whip pole a choice of tippet diameters some floatant material I like to use uh, silicon mucilin which is like a wax and some loon dust which I like to brush on my fly if I get a fish on just shake off the excess water and put some loon dust on that and a pair of scissors and that's your basic materials now obviously there's lots more materials you can take with you a pair of forceps etc and apart from that all you need really is to attach your flies a good selection of dry flies different colors different sizes and you're ready to go dapping and there's one final thing that i would say guys when you're making up your total length of dapping material is don't be tempted to go too long if you make your overall length of dapping floss and tip it much longer than your whip pole then you're only going to run into problems when it comes to landing fish because you'll need to stretch your arms above your head in order to land that fish so don't be tempted to try and fish too long because there's just no need for it guys you can catch fish just the same at fishing at short range